Uh, good afternoon. This meeting of the City University of New York's Board of Trustees is now called to order. Everyone should take a, everyone should take a moment to mute their cell phones. CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this meeting live on channel 75. This meeting is also being webcast live at www.cuny.edu slash livestream and the CUNY Board of Trustees website. I now move that this meeting convene an executive session pursuant to Article 7, Section 105 of the Public Officers Law to discuss matters pertaining to personnel, investigations, and litigation. May I have a second? Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are in executive session. The board will reconvene the public session. Please take your seats. That's how he said hello. He always loved you. <laughs> Why could you be more like that? Yeah, Look how good you are. You're a good man. I'm here. Okay, we are back in public session. Um, I'm going to start out. City University of New York's commitment to protecting and supporting our students has not wavered throughout our 175 year existence. And we will not waver now as we watch the Hamas terror attacks, subsequent horror of Israeli hostages, and the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. CUNY Board of Trustees stands with our city, state, and country in denouncing hate. We will face these challenges with the power of education and the confidence that the strength and resolve of the, community, of the CUNY community will continue to move our city, state, and country forward towards peace and understanding. On October 16th, 2023, the Board of Trustees convened a remote public hearing. 58 people signed up to testify and 41 people testified via Zoom. 34 people submitted written testimony. Students from John Jay College's ACE program spoke positively about the program, how it's transforming the higher education experience for students by providing resources and guidance for students to succeed. Another student spoke about their positive experience with the program for research initiatives in science and math at John Jay College and the interim executive director of the John Jay Institute for Justice and Opportunity submitted written testimony about the work of the Institute. Several staff and faculty members spoke about health and safety issues at Medgar Evers College, as well as the number of interim appointments and the lack of prompt promotional opportunities for higher education officers at the college. Several staff and faculty members from Hunter College expressed concerns about working and learning conditions as well as the need for full-time faculty positions. Several people expressed concerns about the Brookdale Spark Project and affordable housing for students at Hunter and Brookdale. Staff and faculty from City College also discussed the need to hire more faculty and the lack of diversity in faculty hiring. Several PhD students testified about their wages and lack of benefits as well as the difficulty in securing full-time positions. Most speakers were members of the PSC who opposed the proposed savings plan, including cuts to adjuncts, the, vac the vacancy review board, and any tuition increases. They advocated for a fully funded contract, competitive salaries, and infrastructure improvements. Members of the PSC also encouraged the university to increase the number of full-time faculty and increase adjuncts salaries and reduce the disproportionate amount of lecture hires over professional staff hires. One person submitted a written testimony expressing support for the university's budget request, particularly the $10 million investment in CUNY disability services. Several speakers expressed concerns about anti-Semitism at CUNY. Several speakers expressed support for Palestinian students, including counseling and wellness services for all students. Written and remote testimonies expressed the need for free speech protections. Written testimonies expressed support for the CUNY law commencement speaker. A campus peace officer submitted testimony regarding compensation of officers. As always, the testimony has been shared with the board and the chancellery, as well as posted to the trustees' website. <coughs> trustees have been busy since we last met. I'd like to congratulate Trustee Arvanides on his new position with Councilmember Hanks, which he started really? this month. Congratulations. Michael and Trustee Sandra Wilkin, as a matter of fact, Vice Chair Sandra Wilkin, both attended the university student senate's retreat, retreat up at, Mounter, at Hunter Mountain last month 
to represent the board, and let me thank you both for that. Last week, Vice Much Chancellor Dr. Wilkin Dr. also bore greetings at the launch of the Evelyn Ryder <coughs> Community Care Nurse Practitioner Program at Hunter College's Roosevelt House. Thank you for representing us, Sandra. Trustee Herminia Palacio was recently named to, pres to the prestigious National Academy yes, of yes. Medicine. Congratulations. <laughs> Let me now turn to Vice Chancellor Denise Maybank, who will be joined by some student veterans sharing their experiences at CUNY. Thank you. Thank you. So this is our meeting closest to Veterans Day, and so we have three of our students. There are four on your list. Three will be here with us today. One is ill, and so we will not hear from him. But each of them will share their stories. Mervyn? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mervyn Vincent. Today I appear before you as a proud Haitian American and a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I'm currently attending Brooklyn College and I am majoring in finances and accounting. New York has been my home since the age of five. Right after graduating high school, I chose the path of the military because I felt a, de a deep sense of duty to our country. At the time, our country was in need, and I wanted to do my part to serve and protect the ideals we hold dear. The Marines taught me discipline, resilience, and the importance of service to God and country. It was an honor to wear the uniform and represent the values that make our nation great. Two years ago, I completed my second enlistment contract, and I decided it was, home, it was time to come back home to New York City to attend college and earn my degree. I chose CUNY based on experiences from other veterans before myself and my own research. I was attracted to the different schools, the business programs, internship opportunities, and the VA offices on the campuses. Since day one, I was able to work closely with the Veterans Office at Brooklyn College, as well as the CUNY Office of Veterans Affairs. Working closely with Ms. Claudia Gwynn and Ms. Lisa Biatha, I am proud to be a part of the Veteran Inter Internship Program, a program created via CUNY Office of Veterans Affairs and funded by the New York City Council. This program has been essential in helping veterans and military-affiliated students transition from the military to civilian life while also providing us with valuable skills and experience for, for our future. However, as we gather here today, I want to shed light on the challenges that many veterans like myself face as we navigate to the path towards postgraduate employment. The transition from military service to a civilian career can be challenging, and we often wonder how our unique set, skill sets and experiences would be valued by employers. It's crucial for us to have the support and resources needed to bridge this gap. Another concern is the rising cost of housing, especially here in New York City. Many veterans, including myself, might be hesitant to stay in dorms due to our age differences and life experiences. Often, trans in addition, there's another issue that many veterans face when it comes to housing. Even though we receive basic allowance for housing from the VA, it can be disheartening to find that many landlords refuse to accept it as a valid source of income. The discrimination can make the already challenging task of finding affordable and suitable housing even more daunting. As we come together today, I hope we can work towards solutions that addresses these concerns. Veterans have served our nation with honor, and it's a collective responsibility to ensure they have the opportunities and support they need to thrive in, the, in their post-military lives. The City University of New York can play a pivotal role in making this transition smoother, offering not only education, but also a sense of belonging and support that will empower veterans to succeed. Thank you for your attention, and let's continue to work towards a brighter future for all those who have served and continue to serve our great nation. Thank you. Thank you. trustees members. Um, I'd like to say a special good evening to Ms. Lisa, um, Vice Chancellor, President of Kingsborough Community College, where I all started, President of John Jay College, and all you fine people. <laughs> I'm not going to, I had a speech, but I figure under these great people of coaching that I received, I think I should <laughs> speak from my heart without a paper. Right? Um, my name is Agent Alfred again. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, 
medically retired. Um, I choose the Army because I believe in helping and protection. And that's what I did for this country. I put my life, I raised my right arm, and I say, I, I will. This I'll defend. And I will probably do it again if I get the chance. And transitioning from the military, everyone says it's hard, but CUNY has made it easy for me. Going to college, the support I got from Kingsborough Community College, like I had the, the president come to my house. She came to me. Who is me? Who am I? She came to me with her, the, whole, the whole school because I'm a veteran. The CUNY Central Office of Veteran Affairs, Ms. Lisa, very supportive. Tyra in the Kingsborough Veterans Office. Jessica at CUNY Central Office. And these are names that you guys probably might not hear. You all might think they're important people, but they are. To us veterans, they are. Right? It might seem small. I didn't need to go in on the computer and print out stuff and to come here and speak to you wonderful people. I came to speak from my heart, let you know that CUNY is doing a great job. And the veteran peer mentor program that was started up by Central Office, this is how we give back to veterans. I signed up to serve, and I'm, I'm still serving, and I love doing it. Marvin said a lot. I don't need to say what he said. He said a lot. And it's very serious, people. We respect you all, love you all, too. We know that you guys are going to do good for CUNY. All right. I'm not going to tear up here, but it's emotional. Right? You all are important people. I put my life down for everyone in this room, and I will do it again. And for CUNY. I've been to college in the military, and it was not supportive like how CUNY is. Please support us. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Sabrina Holguin. Um, unlike my fellow vets, I have kind of a different beginning story. I joined the Navy. I'm a veteran from the US Navy. I joined the Navy simply because college wasn't an option for me when I graduated high school in 2015. Um, I grew up always tutoring, always babysitting fellow students and younger children in my life. And I always knew that going to college was something that I wanted to do, but simply because it wasn't an option, I knew I had to make a move. And so I joined the Navy and I had a great time there. I was actually able to pursue and um, get, get an associate's degree while I was actively serving. And although I did have a great time in the Navy and I excelled in my job, which I'm very grateful for, um, I knew that wasn't my last step. So I used that as a stepping stone. And when the time came for me to finish my contract with the Navy, I actually contacted one of my family members and she pointed me towards the CUNY system and I told her, I was like, what do I do? You know, and she's like, just apply to every CUNY. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. So I applied to as many CUNYs as possible. And thankfully, Hunter accepted me. They were the only one that accepted me. And super great. I'm super grateful about that. But um, last semester, actually, over the summer, I graduated with my undergrad in psychology. And I'm glad to say I'm back at Hunter again for my master's in special education with a concentration in <laughs> And so, yeah, I'm back studying for my master's in special education with a concentration in learning disabilities, mm -hmm. just to continue fulfilling that natural urge that I had as a child to, you know, teach and tutor. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've, I've had amazing support from the vet center at Hunter with Mindy and Leora. And like he said, these are names you probably don't recognize, maybe you do, but 
I can feel the support and I know the support trickles down from administration and those above them. And it's, it's been so supportive that it's brought me back, you know, and I had other options for my grad school, but after, you know, realizing like I have, a, I built a community and, you know, I have the support. I'm already used to the system pretty much. I was like, you know, why not? And after hearing the history of Hunter, I was just even more inspired to continue going there. And that's pretty much it. I'm super grateful for every one of you and what you guys do for us vets. And like I said, the support is, is definitely felt. So thank you. Thank you for having me as well. and celebrate our heroes and sheroes. And these are those of CUNY, brought to you today in advance of Veterans Day so that we can honor them for the work they do, for the opportunities they give for us to enjoy our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Denise, and, and let me thank our veterans for their service and defense of this nation. And we are always and forever in your debt. And thank you for choosing CUNY. It is an honor to have you all in our schools. Uh, Chancellor, you always get to follow. It, it, it's, it's a tough act. Uh, <laughs> yep. But uh, uh, Chancellor, your report. It's, it's a lovely setup. Uh, to be able to follow our, our students is actually uh, a point of pride. And, 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 and thank you. Uh, um, for what you do, and 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 we we look forward to celebrating your many many more success uh, successes down the line. So, thank you, Chair Thompson, Trustees, President, and Vice Chancellors. I am happy to see all of us back together for the first uh, meeting of the Board of Trustees in the 2023-24 academic year. Um, I want to begin uh, by acknowledging the profound anxiety and grief. That have, that have taken hold in the two weeks since the Hamas terror attacks, the subsequent horror of the Israeli hostages, and the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. I want to echo the words uh, from our chair uh, beginning the meeting, and I want to thank him and the entire board for your support uh, at this very challenging time. CUNY is committed to providing a safe, secure and respectful learning environment across all of our campuses. As this situation continues to evolve, we must continue to be mindful of the many members of our community who are struggling. We have counseling and related support services in place for all community members. We have increased campus public safety presence and secure additional law enforcement, law enforcement protection from local NYPD precincts when needed. This global conflict challenges us to embrace the ideals of higher education. Above all, I am talking about tolerance, empathy, and respect for our differences. Our ongoing work to combat hate is more important than ever. We have no tolerance for anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, or hate of any kind in any of our campuses. And now, if you allow me to pivot and go to um, some of the many, many things that's happened since the last time we met. And luckily, on that front, we have some exciting news to share. I was pleased to see so many of you at the Hunter Silverman School a few weeks back when I delivered my State of the University address and outlined CUNY Lifting New York. CUNY's vision to transform itself into the nation's preeminent student-centered university. The speech included many important announcements. I'll recap only a few of those for you now. For the first time in three years, our enrollment is on the upswing. Early data shows our freshman class is up more than 4%, and transfers are nearly 7%, and more students are attending full-time than ever. We know how important it is to see CUNY's enrollment beginning to grow. The more students who graduate with the career skills they need to succeed, 
the more who will be ultimately stay in the city, enter the workforce, and help power the economy. This is how we help to lift New York. To continue this trend, we need to build on our outreach and recruitment efforts. October marks the start of a college application season, and we build momentum this month with several innovative but pragmatic initiatives. Thanks to our strong partnership with the New York City Public Schools, earlier this month, we sent every high school senior in the New York City Public School system an individualized Welcome to CUNY letter, telling them we are holding a spot for them, giving them direct access to the application, and even waiving the application fee for all of them in the month of October. We are hoping these steps will encourage them to click Submit on that final application bringing them one step closer to being with us at CUNY. A few weeks back, Chancellor Banks and I visited the City College Academy of the Arts, one of our 20 early college high schools, and personally handing out letters to the seniors. One student called the letter quite awesome, while another one said that it was a relief to know she was going to have a chance. Seeing their joy and confidence after receiving the letters was a magical moment for me. For the rest of this month, we're also waiving the application fees for any student in New York State to apply to CUNY, part of Governor Hochul's statewide initiative to make the college application process more accessible and affordable. And uh, in an item that we'll be voting on, uh, hopefully later today, on that fee waiver, I also want to let you know that as of this day today, applications to CUNY are up 140%. Wow. No pressure in the way you're going to vote later, but uh, and we need to convert those to acceptances and those to admits, but uh, clearly it's making, uh, having an impact. We also declare October CUNY Month, and we are currently hosting more than 100 virtual and in-person events across all 25 schools to help students and their families get a taste of CUNY life. And the most beautiful part of our recent outreach effort is something you're hopefully seeing on your commute or around the tri-state or in some of the cameras that are, you know, uh, some of the screens that we have here. Our new ad campaign called A Degree for Every Dream. It launched earlier this month and was produced in-house by our Office of Communications and Marketing. It can be seen on subways, MTA buses and bus stops, highway billboards in New York City and New Jersey, the Long Island and Metro North Railroads, the New Jersey Transit, PATH trains, the Staten Island ferry terminals, and <laughs> at LaGuardia Airport, as well as, as well as on social media platforms. <laughs> it is a true CUNY takeover. We even took over the 42nd Street shuttle train, inside and out. Yes. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to head over to Grand Central and check it out as soon as you can. Another piece of excellent news that I share at the State of the University involves our cutting-edge research enterprise, which has garnered record support from external funders. In the last fiscal year, we raised $633 million in external funding for research and other sponsored programs, a record high in the 60-year history of the Research Foundation of CUNY. Funding for research and other sponsor activity is now higher than it was at the pre-2020 peak. Our strategic roadmap prioritizes the promotion of engaged public impact research and scholarship, and this is another priority area in which CUNY lifts New York. Our researchers are working to reduce disparities in public health, mitigate the impact of climate change, and to help generate knowledge to and solutions for so many other pressing societal needs. And finally, I shared, I, I shared that thanks to Governor Hoko, CUNY now has more funding set aside for career success programs including $1.8 million that would add more internships to our career across the disciplines programs. <coughs> By 2030, we expect to triple the number of students who complete paid internships. I also have a wonderful update about the CUNY Inclusive Economy Initiative, which seeks to bolster career outcomes by connecting students to employers. This program is underway on nine campuses, and six weeks into the semester, they've enrolled 
2,300 students and have 112 employers partners, including NASA, Con Edison, and ABC Media. Today, the Inclusive Economy Initiative has connected students to nearly 7,000 roles, including internships as well as full-time jobs. My State of the University address follow a very special back-to-school season. This year, we welcome 251 newly hired full-time lecturers. They are the latest to join the faculty thanks to the support of an additional $53 million in state funding allocated in the last fiscal year for a total of 516 educators now added thanks to these critical funds. They're also a diverse group, 54% identify as women and 50 of those higher are people of color. Since we last met, we've also announced quite a few uh, new appointments, and here's the rundown. Sharif Soliman, a finance and policy official who served in three New York City mayoral administrations over the past 20 years, was appointed as CUNY Senior Vice Chancellor for Budget and Finance and the University Chief Financial Officer. Lisa Reverman is the new Dean of the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Timothy Lynch is now the president of the College of Staten Island, where he has served as the interim president. Milton Santiago will be leading Bronx Community College as interim president, and Joshua Bromberg is now interim president of the Graduate Center. Please join me in wishing them all well in their new position. We can do that. Speaking of new and shiny, last month, Mayor Adams and I attended the ribbon cutting event for Amazon's beautiful new headquarters in Midtown. Amazon, which has partnered with us on workforce development initiatives, also committed dedicated classroom space for CUNY in the building, which all our schools will be able to use to host workshops and other events. This type of synergy between higher ed and employers is so critical to the success of our students. And now, the favorite part is my speed round because the chair knows that I'm getting to the end of my report. So <laughs> as usual, CUNY and its community members continue to rack up awards and accolades, and these are just a few. Eight of our schools were recognized for their cost efficiency on the Forbes 2023 list of 25 colleges that deliver a high bang for your tuition buck. U.S. and News Reports also named 10 CUNY schools among the top public colleges in the North region for overall quality and effectiveness in promoting social mobility. Six CUNY colleges were also recently tapped to build more teacher training programs. Supported by a grant from the U.S. Department of Education, they will partner with the New York City-based Kennedy Children's Center to develop courses in early childhood special education. I also want to shout out Mandy Holford, a professor at Hunter College and the Graduate Center, who won a National Institutes of Health Common Fund Pioneer Award for her trailblazing research in the therapeutic properties of venoms from marine animals. This is the first time a CUNY faculty <coughs> member has received the NIH Director's Pioneering Award, which will provide a $5.5 million research grant. And kudos also to Kathy Davidson, who founded and co-chairs the Future Initiative and serves as my senior advisor in transformation. Kathy won the 2023 Frederick W. Ness Book Award, along with her colleague Christina Katopoulos, for their co-author book, The New College Classroom. Kathy is the first two-time winner of the award given by the Association of American Colleges and Universities in recognition of the book that best illuminates the goals and practices of a contemporary liberal arts education. <laughs> Last month, I was honored to speak at the inauguration of Harvard President Claudine Gay, who is the university's first black leader and only its second women president. Dr. Gay has a special connection to CUNY, as her parents emigrated to New York from Haiti and both attended City College. Dr. Gay told me that her life, and I quote, was shaped in fundamental ways by her parents' belief that education opens every door 
as well as the opportunity that their CUNY education afforded them. It was meaningful to be there representing CUNY in what felt like a full circle moment for all of us and her family. As I wrap up my report, I wanted to acknowledge the loss of two former trustees and beloved members of the CUNY family. Benno Smith Jr., who served the board with dedication for 17 years, first as vice chairperson and then as chairperson, passed away in July. He instituted many key reforms during his tenure, including the work he did to make the university more integrated and to increase faculty hiring. He also helped guide CUNY after 9-11. We are all beneficiaries of his legacy of service and leadership. We're also extremely saddened by the loss of Carol Robles Roman in August. Carol was a member of the board for 14 years and more recently, the general counsel and dean of the faculty at Hunter College. She was a fierce champion of civil rights and a passionate supporter of higher education and we hope to honor her spirit by continuing to boldly advocate for the advancement of all students, but particularly of women. This concludes my report, and I wish you all an enjoyable fall, and I look forward to seeing you back here in December for our final meeting of 2023. Until then, the hard work continues. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Let's now turn to items requiring a vote today. Item one, uh, the draft minutes of the regular board meeting and executive session of June 26, 2023. I'd like to move this item. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? <laughs> We're going to now move to approve the minutes. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? All right, uh, that item is approved. Item number two, I now call on Committee on Finance and Administration Chair Henry Berger to present and move the following items. Mr. Chairman, the Board Committee on Finance and Administration considered the following matters at its meetings on October 2, 2023, which I now present to the Board. The full resolutions have been previously distributed. We will work from a brief summary. Item 2A is a resolution to approve the planned use of $50 million in non-recurring transformational funds. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2A for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All right, we'll now move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed to abstentions? All right, that item's approved. Item 2B is a resolution to authorize a time-limited waiver of application fees for seniors graduating from New York City and New York State high schools. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2B for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? We'll now move to a vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? And I'm, I daren't know. Any opposed to abstentions? <laughs> that item's approved. Mr. Chair, can I ask for uh, just kudos to Vice Chancellor Renee Sarmiento and her team for the wonderful leadership in this entire initiative and the great results that we're getting? Second. <laughs> item 2C is a resolution to approve a new pricing structure for global graduate degree programs for students attending Baruch College under its global partnership agreements. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2C for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2D is a resolution to authorize a contract for Dropbox. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2D two two for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved. Item 2E is a resolution to authorize a contract for ServiceNow licenses. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2E for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. 
Item 2F is a resolution to authorize a contract extension for maintenance, maintenance support services for licensed Oracle software products. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2F for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2G is a resolution to authorize a contract with Dreamland Security Services, Inc. to provide unarmed security and fire guard services to the City College of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2G for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? That item is approved. Item 2H is a resolution to extend transportation services contract for a period of up to one additional year at the College of Staten Island. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2H for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Good. Any discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I just want to encourage my colleagues to vote for this. Staten Island is often uh, described as a transportation desert, and this connects the number one destination on Staten Island, the Staten Island Ferry, to the number three destination on Staten Island, the College of Staten Island. It's wildly popular. I will say in the future when this comes up for uh, renewal next year, I'd like the opportunity to see if we can get some advertising revenue on this bus. It's, it's very popular and goes down a major thoroughfare. Currently doesn't have any advertising. It might be an opportunity for revenue. Great idea. Um, and I'd, I'd like to see more of those buses been possible. Perhaps that could fund that. So please vote for this. It's necessary and proper. And if you think it's only benefiting Staten Islanders, a full 20% of uh, Tim Lynch's students now come from off Staten Island, and they're utilizing this. Uh, one question, Trustee Arvanides. Sure. Uh, if, if Staten Island Ferry is number one and, Stat and the College of Staten Island is number three, what is number two? The yeah. hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you know I had to ask. Unfortunately, we all have to go there <laughs> once. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other comments or discussion on this item? All right, we'll now move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? Because of you, it's unanimous. They <laughs> <laughs> Item 2I is a resolution to, to approve the Personnel Matters Report of the Finance and Administ Administration Committee. Mr. Chairman, I present Item 2I for the Board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Item 2I has been approved. Item 2J is a resolution to appoint Robert Koslick as associate, I'm sorry, Robert Koslick Jr. as associate vice chancellor of design, construction, and management at the City University of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2J for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? That item has been approved. Item 2K is a resolution to appoint Elena, Elena Gijigo as Vice President for Operations and Administration at Baruch College. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2K for the board's consideration. We have a second for that item. Second. Any discussion on the item? We'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2L is a resolution to appoint Gisette Fort as Vice President of Finance Administration at Queensborough Community College. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2L for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll move vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2M is a resolution to appoint Thomas Isakonegvi as university pro professor. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2M for the board's consideration. I may have a second for this item. Second. second. Any discussion on the item? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed to abstentions? That item's been approved. Item 2N is a resolution to authorize 
I, a procurement of bar exam preparation courses, double I, a contract and related expenditures, and triple I, waiver of the cost of such program for third year law students mm -hmm. enrolled at CUNY School of Law. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2N for the board's consideration. May I have a second for that item? Second. second. Is there any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Moving right along. Item 2O is a resolution to appoint Melissa Kirk as Senior University Dean for Enrollment Management at the City University of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2O for the board's consideration. We have a second for this. Second. Any discussion on the item? We'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Item 2O is approved. Item 2P is a resolution to appoint Althea Ford as Interim University Dean of Special Programs at the City University of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2P for the board consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? We'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? That item is <clears throat> approved. Item 2Q is a resolution to appoint Kara Heffernan as Interim University Dean of Student Success Initiatives at the City University of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2Q for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2R is a resolution to appoint Ann Lopes, Interim Senior University Dean of Graduate and Undergraduate Programming at the City University of New York. Mr. Cuny, I, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> a new title. All right, thank you so much. When you get to page six, it's yes. going all go. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I present item 2R for the board's consideration. I like it. <laughs> have a second for this item. <laughs> Any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2S is a resolution to appoint Michael Rakiki as Interim Vice President of in Information Services and Chief Information Officer at Baruch College. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2S for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Item 2T is a resolution to appoint Claudia Garcia Lindau as Interim Vice President for Administration and Finance at your college. Mr. Chairman, I present item 2T for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item's approved. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for any names I may have mispronounced, <laughs> and that concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you. We're glad you've, t you've tired of monopolizing the board meeting, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your work. Um, item three, Committee on Education Policy. Let me call on Chairperson Jill O'Donnell Tormey to present and move the following items. Mr. Chairman, the Board Committee on Education Policy considered the following matters at its meeting on October 2, 2023, which I will now present to the Board. Policy item 3A1 is a resolution to establish a program in software technology leading to a Bachelor of Science degree at the New York City College of Technology. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3A1 for the Board's considerations. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved. Policy item 3A2 is a resolution to establish a program leading to the MD degree at a standalone registered program of the CUNY School of Medicine at the City College of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3A2 for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. second. Any discussion? We'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved. Policy item 3B1 is a resolution to establish a new institute on gender, law, and transformative peace at the City University of New York School of Law. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3B1 for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. second. Any discussion? Right, let's now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed abstentions? 
That item is approved. Policy item 3B2 is a resolution to authorize the decertification of inactive centers, institutes, and consortia in accordance with Board of Trustee Policy 1.09. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3B2 for the Board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved, let me thank the committee for its work there. Policy item 3C1 is a resolution to appoint Margaret Rosario as distinguished professor at the City University at the City College of New York. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3C1 for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? We'll now vote all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved. Policy items 3C2 through C through, through 3C17 are resolutions to award immediate tenure to faculty at various schools with an application of bylaw 6.2B. Mr. Chairman, I present items 3C2 through 3C17 for the board's consideration. I have a second for these items. Second. Is there any discussion? I'll just note, I have to move mine one at a time. She gets to be the Clearly, you like the sound you. of your own voice. <laughs> 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 All Thank you, Jill. And now going back, is there any further discussion on these items? We'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? All of these are <laughs> items are approved. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Policy item 3D is a resolution requesting the approval of the Faculty Personnel Matters Report of the Education Policy Committee. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3D for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion? Let's now, we'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? That item is approved. Policy item 3E is a resolution requesting the approval of the actions in the curriculum and academic policy dashboard report. Mr. Chairman, I present item 3E for the board's consideration. We have a second for this item. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Mr. That, Chairman, this concludes my report. Oh, did I use that? I'm approved. approved. That, okay, okay, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, <laughs> this concludes oh. my report. Thank you, Jill. And, and, and one thing, for those who are watching this meeting again, and I've mentioned it on a few other occasions, the reason we're able to move through this agenda so quickly is because our board members have spent time in our committees uh, doing the work, doing the hard work. And again, let me thank all of you for the work that you do to be able to get us to this point in a public meeting to be able to move through the agenda so quickly because all these items have been reviewed, vetted, uh, discussed, and move forward. So again, to all my colleagues, thank you so much for the work that you do. Item number four is the Committee on Facilities Planning and Manage and Management. Let me now call on Committees on Facilities Planning and Management Vice Chair Sandra Wilkin to present and move the following items. Mr. Chairman, the Board Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered the following matter at its meeting on October 2nd, 2023, which I will now present to the Board. Item 4A is a resolution to authorize a lease amendment with APF 28 West 44 owner LP as landlord at 28 West 44th Street, New York, New York, to expand the leased premises for CUNY School of Labor and Urban Studies. Mr. Chairman, I present 4A for the board's consideration. May I have a second for this item? Second. Is there any discussion? Let's now vote. All those in favor? Mr. Chair, if you oh, just sorry. indulge me again, I yes, apologize. Sir. I just want to thank Executive Vice Chair Batista, who took us to uh, this place. This is a hidden gem in, in CUNY that uh, hopefully won't remain hidden anymore as we now have a storefront retail space. This is the dream of the labor movement in New York City. And uh, the School of Labor and Urban Studies, uh, Sandra Wilkins and I got to speak to the faculty, and it was very moving, and we discussed how this is, there are two ladders in New York City for social mobility. One of them is CUNY and one of them is the labor movement and mm -hmm. school for labor and urban studies. They intersect. So thank you for that very much, Vice Chancellor. I appreciate you, that. Any other comments on this? Uh, clearly, when we uh, met with uh, both the dean, 
uh, Matos and uh, the chair and terrific students that really add to the opportunities that are there for both urban uh, studies and, uh, and for the workforce. And it was incredibly impressive. So to be able to have them having this opportunity, I'm sure they will make it worth the time and effort uh, for CUNY and for New York. Thank you, Sam. Um, any other comments? The item is before us. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? <coughs> that item's approved. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Chancellor has asked the Board to consider four additional resolutions. I'll ask the Secretary to read each resolution for the record, and we'll first vote to add the item and then take a vote on the item itself. Gail? Item 5 is a resolution to appoint Sharif Solomon as Senior Vice Chancellor for Budget and Finance and Chief Financial Officer at the City University of New York, and the resolution reads as follows, whereas Sharif Solomon has over 25 years of experience in New York State and City of New York government and previously served in the City of New York Office of the Mayor as Chief Policy and Delivery Officer and earlier as Director of the Mayor's Office of Policy and Planning, where he was responsible for policy development in key areas on behalf of the Honorable Mayor Eric Adams, and whereas Mr. Solomon was previously the Commissioner of the New York City Department of Finance, where he managed an agency with approximately 2,000 employees, an estimated $340 million budget, and collection of over $40 billion in annual revenue. And whereas Commissioner Mr. Solomon also served on several boards, including the New York City Housing Development Corporation, the New York City Municipal Water Finance Authority, the New York City Banking Commission, the New York City Police Pension Fund, the New York City Fire Pension Fund, and the Metropolitan Transit Authority. And whereas Mr. Solomon was also the Chief of Staff for the City of New York Office of the Deputy Mayor for Operations, where he oversaw the functions of over 20 New York City agencies and offices, including the Departments of Finance, Sanitation, Transportation, Environmental Protection, Buildings, Design and Construction, Information Technology and Telecommunications in the Fire Department of the City of New York. And whereas Mr. Solomon is currently a member of the City of New York Mayor's Office of Equity Advisory Board on the implementation of racial justice charter amendments, and whereas Mr. Solomon received a BS in political science from the State University of New York at Oneonta, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York appoint Sharif Solomon as Senior Vice Chancellor for Budget and Finance and Chief Financial Officer at the City University of New York effective September 28, 2023 with compensation of $320,000 per annum subject to financial ability and the explanation is as follows. With service in three New York City mayoral administrations, Sharif Solomon brings both a technical and policy understanding of finance and budgeting in a policy-making environment, which is critical for an institution reliant on resources from all levels of government. Mr. Solomon was selected from a nationwide search. The Chancellor highly recommends this appointment. I'd like to make a motion to add item 5 to our agenda. May I have a second? Second. second. All right. Uh, let's take a vote on this. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Mm -hmm. Item 5 has been added. I'd like to now move item number 5. May I have a second? Second. second. Any discussion on this item? All right, let's now move to a vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? We have a new CFO. Congratulations. Thank you so much for uh, approving this appointment um, as a lifelong New Yorker first-generation American and uh, public servant for over 25 years. I'm a big believer in CUNY's mission, so it's an honor and a privilege to sit at this table with all of you and, and uplift this, uh, this amazing institution. I've worked with so many of you around the table, so I look forward to working with you in this capacity. Um, and of course, I want to thank the Chancellor, thank Hector, Wendy, Derek, the entire executive team, really everybody for their support and for rolling out the welcome mat for a warm welcome and what's my fourth week here. So thank you very much. Appreciate it and look forward to working with you. Item number six is a resolution to appoint Joshua Brumberg as interim president of the CUNY Graduate Center. 
And the resolution reads as follows, whereas since 2016, Joshua Brumberg has served as the Dean for the Sciences at the CUNY Graduate Center, where he oversees 11, 11 doctoral programs and five MS programs in sciences, technology, engineering, and math, STEM, research operations for the CUNY Graduate Center and the Advanced Science Research Center for the City University of New York and the university's instructional program and financial aid budgets for STEM programs. And whereas as a member of the senior staff of the CUNY Graduate Center, Dr. Brumberg has co-chaired the Subcommittee for Strategic Plan Development and the Subcommittee for Middle States Accreditation and created and raised funding for diversity programs in the laboratory sciences as well as gender equity and mathematics. And whereas Dr. Brumberg previously directed the university's doctoral training in psychology and served as acting executive director of the university's advanced science research center from 2018 to 2019 and 2022 to 2023 and whereas dr brumberg is a professor of psychology at queen's college has published over 60 peer-reviewed articles and has received multiple grants from the national science foundation and the national institutes of health and whereas dr brumberg holds a phd in neurobiology from the university of Pittsburgh and a BA in biology from Williams College. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York appoint Joshua Brumberg as interim president of the CUNY Graduate Center, effective September 29th, 2023, with compensation of $330,000 per annum, subject to financial ability. Explanation is as follows. The appointment of Dr. Brumberg as <coughs> interim president will ensure the critical work of the Graduate Center continues uninterrupted during the search for the next president. The Chancellor highly recommends this appointment. May I have, uh, I'd like to move item number six. May I have a, sec a second for this item? Second. Second. All right, any discussion on this? <coughs> we'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or opposed? All right. That item six has been added. Uh, I'd like to move item number six. Do I have a second for that? Second. All right. Um, any comments on? Did I just? No, you just you you're good. Any comments? And you got to vote it. Any comments? It gets a little cray cray. Um, any comments? All right. We'll now move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? That has been approved. Item, item seven is a resolution to appoint Rosemary Wesson as Associate Vice Chancellor and University Vice Provost for Research at the City University of New York. The resolution is as follows, whereas since 2022, Dr. Wesson has served as the Associate Provost for Research at the City College of New York, where her areas of responsibility include research development, grants and contracts, the animal care facility, and research compliance and ethics, and whereas in her role as Associate Provost for Research at CCNY, Dr. Wesson promoted, supported, and expanded the research mission, worked closely with the Provost and President on strategic initiatives to develop and support research, spearheaded the college-wide research vision initiative, and has expanded the research portfolio by 30 percent. And whereas from 2015 to 2022, Dr. Rosemary Wesson served as the Associate Dean for Research at the Grove School of Engineering at CCNY, while also serving as Interim Associate Provost for Research from 2020 to 2022. And whereas Dr. Wesson's efforts at CCNY focused on deepening scholarly research activities on all academic areas and advancing new institutional research programs through the development of strategic partnerships within CCNY and the other 24 colleges and institutions of the City University of New York. And whereas Dr. Wesson is a professor of chemical engineering with strong records of federal funding and publications, a deep understanding of the federally funded research culture and a commitment to elevating underrepresented minority students and faculty. And whereas since 2015, Dr. Wesson has held a tenured faculty position in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the Grove School of Engineering at CCMY, and previously held faculty appointments at the University of Maryland, The Ohio State University, and Louisiana State University. And whereas the terms and conditions of the Executive Compensation Plan state that once appointed to positions in the ECP, staff who have underlying professorial appointments will immediately be placed on leave from that professorial appointment, and whereas her experience in industry includes over two decades at the Dow Chemical Company, and whereas Dr. Wesson had over 13 years of leadership experience at the National Science Foundation, 
uh, the NSF, where she was awarded the NSF Director's Award for Collaborative Integration and the NSF Director's Award for Superior Accomplishment. And whereas in recognition of her contributions and achievements, Dr. Wesson was appointed as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS, and of the American Institute of Chemical Engineering, the AICHE, and was also elected to the AICHE Board of Directors. And whereas Dr. Wesson has been recognized for her leadership and commitment to advancing diversity with the Women in Engineering Leadership Award from CCMY, the Minority Affairs Committee Eminent Chemical Engineers Award from the AICHE, and the AICHE Black Achievers in Chemical Engineering Award, and whereas Dr. Wesson is frequently invited to present at local, national, and international conferences and symposia, and whereas Dr. Wesson earned a BS in chemical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, an MS and PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Michigan, and as a licensed professional engineer, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve the appointment of Rosemary Wesson as Associate Vice Chancellor and University Vice Provost for Research at an annual salary rate of $275,000 subject to fiscal ability, effective December 1st, 2023, and be it further resolved that at the time Dr. Wesson's appointment as Associate Vice Chancellor for Research takes effect, she will be placed on leave from her professorial appointment in accordance with the terms and conditions of the executive compensation plan, <clears throat> my voice is going, uh, explanation, as the successful candidate from a nationwide search for an associate vice chancellor for research, Dr. Wesson has served in several leadership and research leadership roles in public higher education, the private sector, the national agency level, and at several prestigious organizations and foundations where she, was, she has contributed to raising the research profile and enterprises and led strategic planning efforts Rosemary Wesson has taught in the professorial ranks for over three decades. Her experience in research administration at the private, institutional, and federal levels demonstrates Dr. Wesson's passion for research, education, and innovation, Dr. Wesson's commitment to advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion among faculty and students aligns with the mission of the City University of New York. The Chancellor highly recommends this appointment. Okay. Let, me tell you. Yeah. Let me make a motion to add item seven to our agenda. Do I have a second? Second. second. We'll now take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? Item seven has been added. I'd like to move item number seven. May I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion on this item? We'll now vote. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? Item 7 has been approved. Okay, last up, sorry. Item number 8 is a resolution for research leave for the former president of CUNY Graduate Center. Gail? And the resolution of appreciation reads as follows. Whereas on March 30th, 2020, Dr. Robin Gorell was appointed president of the CUNY Graduate Center by the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York, effective August 1st, 2020. And whereas Dr. Gorell's tenure as president, uh, I'm sorry, during Dr. Gorell's tenure as president, she helped the nationally recognized institution continue to build upon its reputation as an innovator in graduate education and a magnet for state-of-the-art research, securing a $9.5 million donation for the school Stone Center on Socioeconomic Inequality, funding for a new tuition-free master's program aimed at diversifying astrophysics education, and $3 million in additional annual funding to increase doctoral student stipends. And whereas Section 6.2B of the Bylaws of the Board of Trustees states that a distinguished person of proven record appointed to the title of associate professor or the title of professor who had tenure in another accredited institution of higher learning may be appointed with immediate tenure by the board in its discretion. Whereas on March 30th, 2020, the Board of Trustees approved the appointment of Dr. Gorell as a full professor with tenure at the Graduate Center, effective August 1st, 2020, at which time she was placed on leave from her title while she served as president of the Graduate Center. And whereas Dr. Gorell resigned her position as president of the Graduate Center effective September 29th, 2023, and will transition to her faculty role at the Graduate Center effective January 1, 2024, 
And whereas in accordance with Executive Law 169.3, the Board of Trustees has established the university's executive compensation plan, and as president of the Graduate Center, Dr. Correll was a member of the ECP and therefore eligible for the benefits of such plan, including study leaves upon recommendation of the chancellor to the Board of Trustees. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approve a paid study leave for Dr. Robin Gorell, effective September 30th, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, to prepare for her position as a faculty member, and be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and appreciation to Robin Gorell for her service as president of the CUNY Graduate Center and the City University of New York. We congratulate Dr. Carell on her Gorell on her accomplishments and wish her well in her future endeavors. I'd like to make a motion to add item A to our agenda. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Item oops. <coughs> item eight has been added all well before we added. All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed abstentions? I now move item number eight. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the item? We'll now vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to abstentions? That item has been approved. There being no further business. May I? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a point of personal privilege. I just want to, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, last week, Trustee Cortez Vasquez celebrated her quinceañero. So, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no go right ahead. <laughs> you're, you're making friends. Let me tell you. <laughs> there being no further business, I, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Ooh, second. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>